Everybody listen to We Are Not Wizards. Because we are the best. And we're not wizards. No matter what anybody says. Goodbye. <laughs>
but they're just trying know, to use all the know, animals. Well, the wrong way around. I mean, if they kind of took a left instead of a right, you know, we could be drinking like dog milk. Well, maybe think someone tried it and maybe it tastes awful. I Maybe I don't know. Go, I don't know. I, I know, don't you know. think about it, eggs are weirder. That's like, <laughs> why, why are we eating eggs? Because they're naturally a good source of protein. I eat a lot of eggs. So is milk. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. <laughs> but, but I don't, you know, I just, I, yeah, I just think it's kind of weird. I think it's probably more likely for somebody to kind of naturally be going around gathering eggs and saying, okay, well, can we, you know, maybe eat this? This looks like a good thing to eat. But I mean, how did the first guy kind of go? Was he feeding other cows? And then he went, oh, this is accidentally tastes really, really good. And then before he knew it, he got discovered by his friends and he was like, hey, what is it? He says, give me your coffee. No, I'm not giving you my coffee. No, give me your coffee. And he <laughs> just leave my coffee alone. No, give me your coffee. So he takes his coffee and he reaches behind him and he goes, what, what are you doing with the cow pail? Don't do that. Don't do that. What are you? Oh. And, and then he hands in it and he goes, drink that. I'm not drinking that. Come on. That's coming out of cows. That's cow juice. I'm not drinking that. Drink it. Try your coffee. And he takes a sip and the next thing you know. You know, so maybe the first kind of thing was all to do with um, it was maybe a latte that started out the whole kind of milk evolution. There's probably a really good scientific explanation and a decent story for it, but I have no idea what's kind of going on. That's the closest thing to a faucet they have, right? I mean, it's just kind of <laughs> it's a free beverage. It's right there. It's just, yeah, it's like I don't know. You can get into a whole pile of different things. I just, I just, I just don't understand why now, right? Have we evolved cows so much that, in order to create milk, you know, through whatever, through breeding, you know, specific breeding, um, you know, in some cases through hormone injections and stuff like that, if you know, um, that human human beings just. Basically, we can't have the type of milk that is available now, and kids just can't deal with it because they're just not, their just stomach just can't, you know, cope with all that additional super inbred lactose type thing. I, I don't, don't know, know about that. Yeah. Have you it's tried? Have you tried? Oh, have, <laughs> let's play on my expertise. I'm obviously just winging it. <laughs> have you? T- <laughs> have you tried oat milk then? Oat milk? Have you tried oat milk or anything like that? Yeah, oat milk. Milk made out of oats or milk made out of nuts. Sure, no, or... Almond milk. Oh, yeah, exactly. Have you tried that? Uh, I think I've had almond milk once. It was not good. I did not enjoy it. It's okay. Do you know what's really nice? Um, I think it's just bad is... advertising. It's not related to milk in any ways. It's just pulverized almonds. <laughs> Yeah, but in order to get in order to get people kind of drinking it, they've got to kind of put it along as it's some kind of like substitute, isn't it? I mean, if they just said, yes. "Hey, I would mean, you like sure. would you like to buy juiced almonds?" Folk are gonna go, "I'm not buying juiced almonds." You know, it's um, this is nonsense. However, if they say it's like Alpro, it's like you know, Alpro is like this is like this lovely almond milk that you can go and go milk, I guess. But if you put that stuff in coffee, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of do the lightning thing because it doesn't have the actual same kind of cream fat content. So mm-hmm. all you do is you get kind of coffee, which is a lighter color because it's kind of got milk type stuff in it, but it doesn't really make it kind of the creamy stuff. So you're still missing the fat because almond milk doesn't yeah. have the fat in it. So there we go. Oat yeah. milk is good on no, cereal. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not uh, lactose intolerant. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know. I think I don't know. I just the other thing. I I have no idea. Anyway, so that was a thoughtful process. And uh, welcome to We're Not Wizards. And if you've been listening along, you've been going. Have I tuned into the wrong podcast? And no, you're just. Let's be uh, honest. There's no into- one listening by now. Like they're they've all gone. 
they've not gone. <laughs> if you know, they've, they've definitely not gone. Um, that thoughtful voice <laughs> that you're hearing opposite me is is Mark Davis from the Thoughtful Gamer, um, who for whatever reason <laughs> said he'd be willing to come back on. And at the moment, I think he's one of these people who is currently questioning his life choices. But there you go. Um, <laughs> are you? <laughs> Are you are you well? <laughs> First of all, are you tra- traumatized? <laughs> as well as I can be. <laughs> I was, and you were, and you were afraid we wasted all the good conversation before we started recording. I, as as it's a normal kind of thing. I reckon you know one day I'm gonna, if I haven't deleted them all, I'm gonna release the the green room tapes, and it's just gonna be mad. <laughs> conversations that happen before the podcast button kind of gets kind of gets played um i was trying to set the you know i was trying to scan back to actually check kind of when you were last on the show in my skype (laughs) this is a scary thing and this is when i get so regretful is i'm kind of like um it says you last chatted um it's a guilt machine you last chatted over a year ago and i was like was it that oh my goodness and it's like i'm only actually using people for content this is where we are <laughs> i've not <laughs> i've i've not actually under any circumstances checked if you're well you know if life is treating you okay in fact if we had recorded like next next week it would have been our one year anniversary how about that so there you go really yeah wow Look yeah that. that is you know so there you go. So what? So so what you been up to in the last three hundred and fifty-eight days, then, Mark? <laughs> well, <laughs> playing board games, <laughs> not thinking deeply about the nature of milk. Uh, <laughs> That's an important subject. You're going to yeah. be thinking about it now. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, now it's stuck in there. It's it's a thought I had, and. Uh, you can't escape. Gotta from live it. with it. You can't escape. From no. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been yeah playing board games, writing about them. Same same old thing. Uh, bought a house. With my wife. We've been trying to get that to uh, uh, trying to get that ready to move into. Uh, apparently, contractors are not fans of communicating with other people. So that's been a thing. Most of playing board games having a good. How does it work? <laughs> how does it work then? Is it like? Are you talking about getting like plumbers in and you know plumbers yeah. in and guys like that and electricians in to kind of like get stuff fitted and sorted out and stuff like that? Yeah. Well, we we got a house. We got a house with a basement because I wanted to make it into like an office game room kind of thing, family room. Yeah, which and is your right, absolute right as a man to do that. <laughs> um. And and so you know I'm not particularly handy so. It, emailed some contractors heard back from less than half of them Mm -hmm. after two weeks of silence and then it's been two months since then or a month and a half and i have a quote from an electrician but not the contractor yet he's only given me an estimate and apparently is trying to arrange the electrician to come over so uh that's that's been a month and a half of progress of me Wow. Emailing emailing them, uh, then doing a couple follow ups every few days. <laughs> I I don't uh, I don't understand it. Over here, I mean contractors, are they like guys that you say, Okay, I want the following five jobs do doing and they just go ahead and they kinda organize the different people to come in. Is that kinda how they how they can yeah. work? Yeah. I mean, I assume so. But he, just, in your experience, you finally got an electrician. He got an electrician to come over, look at it, yeah. print out a quote, and now they're trying to schedule that. But I mean, it's a lot of waiting and silence involved. And apparently, I, I assume they're just like they have more work than they could deal with, I guess, or they just don't care that. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I I've talked I, to I, other people in the area, and they've had similar uh, problems. So apparently, it's it's a thing. It's like my direct experience at the moment, and we're in a similar situation, is that we moved into our house. um, We moved into our new house a year ago. 
and you're doing all the you know the big jobs are going out of the way and now we've decided we're going to get some work done on the house and um they're these these trade guys are so busy well they're either so busy or they're really really unorganized now understand these guys are working all the time they're like working weekends or working till late and stuff like that but there seems to be this thing where they can't just turn around and say I'm too busy. I can't. I can't come round and help you. My, my my wife puts a post on Facebook and says, "You know, you do the recommendations thing. Does anyone know like a a plumber, a, an electrician, a joiner in the area?" And you get like fifty million replies saying, "Oh yeah, I'll come round and and check it out." And it's just like you. We heard about. We heard from about like. Three out of the ten people who said they were going to come around, and then we arranged them to come round. And out of the three people that came round, one guy turned up. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right, you know. And then he's like, okay, and it's like, we're giving you the job, and he's like, oh, that sounds really good, um, you know. And it's it's not because we've kind of gone out and been financially savvy and got like three quotes or something like that we've given him the job because he's the only guy that turned up <laughs> just, you know it's like it's either it's either you or nothing and you know and yeah. I don't, and it's like you know I don't care if you're turning up in that you know in that rickety van and you accidentally set fire to my to my bin on the way in you know because you, you know, and it's it doesn't bother me that you're kind of like, um, you know, you're smoking crack cocaine in my kitchen. I mean, you turned up, um, therefore, therefore you're kind of you're kind of getting the job. So so here we go. Um, so I wish you, <laughs> I wish you best best of luck. I don't know. Thank you. I I'm trying to think if it is um, if I'm in the wrong job. <laughs> Because it's the other thing is as well is that they don't turn up in rickety vans. These guys are turning up in the top of the range Land Rovers with private plates and stuff like that as well. I mean, and, and yeah, if it's just an issue of like there's too much work to do, I'm sure prices are going up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a good line I, of work. I just don't know anything about that kind of work. I'm just the type of person when it comes to DIY um I have great vision in my head of what I could potentially achieve doing the stuff myself, but I know that I lack potentially the skills to make it happen in a way that wouldn't be a kind of an absolute disaster kind of going on. So I guess yeah. Yeah, I guess that's the kind of the, that's that's the kind of the way the way it is. But um, I do you. <laughs> If it's, if it's something I can look up and get precisely the instructions I need, yeah, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. But I mean, there's nothing online precise to like my basement. I don't. I don't. And require a lot of tools I don't have. I mean, yeah. And then it's fitting lights and stuff like that. I mean, it's like if yeah. it's like it's, you know, it's like oh, do you just need to? turn off the electricity and I'm like being overzealous and turning off you know the entire circuit breaker switchboard thing you know I'm just turning it off so the entire kind of the entire street is being <laughs> I'm going out into the street <laughs> cutting off the entire kind of street from its electricity so I can go in and change this one light because I just really don't want to die of being electrocuted <laughs> I don't think that would be a good look <laughs> You know, and then you're kind yeah. of like, how are you meant to hang a light? You're meant to have three hands when you hang a light. You're meant to have two hands to hold up the light and then a third person in to kind of screw the light in and stuff like that. And it's just like driving me up the wall. And you get an, ele an electrician in and he manages to do it with his feet. They've done it so often. They're like, you know, they've got like prehensile toes and stuff like that. They can just like do 15 things at once <laughs> and they take half the time, you know. Yeah. It's just a terrible thing, which is why... Our expertise is all about board games and tabletop. Whoa. Look at it? that segue. Yeah. <laughs> I had to bring it back, otherwise, you know, <laughs> we're kind of like 20 minutes in and we've kind of like, everybody would be, <laughs> you just have somebody going, okay, time of death. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're not I mean, once you get podcast. to a certain 
there's a certain point when you're recording a podcast where you're like, wow, mm-hmm. yeah, everyone stopped listening by now and it's free. I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of happens. And it's like, it's, it's not true it's liberation. Not like, it's not like you're in a theater and you can see actually people physically stand and get up. <laughs> you don't see that, though. I do believe iTunes have this thing where they say, here's the number of minutes before people kind of checked out of your kind of episode. And I think um, I looked at the stats for that kind of once, and that was probably I'm good now. I don't, <laughs> I don't even I don't need those stats, and I don't need the tears that followed. To be perfectly honest, so there you go. Um, yeah. wh- what you been playing then? <laughs> it's a rubbish segue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this and that, no. Uh, Just you know, uh, cardboard is... games, stuff. Yes, yeah, it's, it's games. Things. They got they got dice sometimes, cards. Uh, Are you able to play play no, as much because you're so busy? Are you able to play as much because uh, you've been so busy because you got the house stuff and things like that? Yeah. I mean, the house stuff we had we had we set ourselves up so that we have time to take our time a bit there, mm. but. uh yeah, I, I play regularly on Thursday nights uh, of friends who come over, um, and mm-hmm. then I've been able to be able, excuse me, I've been able to get in more uh, longer games on the weekends pretty regularly, and then occasionally here and there. Um, but I've been able to keep up with, with stuff, so that's nice. Um, got in eighteen XX games recently, uh, which has been a great adventure. Tell um, me about them. I have no idea. 18xx. It doesn't mean when when I'm thinking that I'm thinking kind of like ye oldie war games type thing. Am I wrong? I mean, they're 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 train games, uh, stock oh, kind of okay. stock manipulation train games. So not necessarily dealing with war, but do have kind of an older foundation. The first one was made in the early 80s, I think. Um, by uh, Francis Tresham, the guy who made uh, Civilization. All oh, right, uh, okay, so those, okay, yeah. So those are his two, his two big uh, things he's known for. Uh, but then people fell in love with with the second one he made, eighteen thirty, and then have iterated on that multiple times a year. It seems, and so GMT, who I the pub, a publisher I follow. Uh, yeah. published their first 18xx game and I really you know I really like their product so I'm like eh, I've heard of this before this is probably a decent time to jump into it it was supposed to be one that's pretty easy going for newcomers uh, 1846 mm-hmm. and then finally got around to playing it and just absolutely fell in love uh, so they're they're games where you act as investors in different train companies and uh-huh. so you're you're buying and selling stock and then what was the the largest percentage of the company gets to run that company's operations but really they're they're very highly interactive economic games um, the closest parallel would be like a splatter game like food chain magnate where you know there, there's not an insignificant amount of calculation and then kind of everything is interacting with the other players uh, it's not like it's not like a Lacerda game where you're kind of interacting with the game systems a lot. You're you're very yeah. much doing everything in response to what the other people around the table are doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So are you so because one of the things that's always that can be levied at kind of like multiplayer kind of games, especially if it's competitive games and especially if it's Euros, is a lack of kind of like player interactivity, except for like the beginning. You know the beginning of the beginning round and the end round. And apart from that, in the middle, it's like it doesn't matter if you've got five players around the table or fifty players around the table. There isn't going to be kind of any real effect on kind of like what people are doing. Yeah, it's not like that at all. I mean, it's. I mean, it, it, a lot of it depends on which particular eighteen XX you're playing, um, but some of them are just absolutely brutal. Like you're. You're doing all kinds of these weird shenanigans just to 
bring down the price of a particular company or to sell off all the assets and then dump the company on someone else. Like, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's very much a different experience you'll get from other economic games. It, and I hesitate to call it even like a Euro game because it's, it's so brutal and nasty and you can be eliminated from the games. Most of the games, some of them, if someone goes bankrupt and gets eliminated, that just triggers the end of the game and you mm-hmm. tally, tally the money. Um, man, it's, it's just so unique. Um, and I've discovered, you know, and we've kind of, me and my friend Orion, who's on, who's on the Thoughtful Gamer podcast, uh, most of the time. Also, uh, I've gotten really, really into it. And we found a group, uh, that plays 18 XX games weekly. Um, so we've been kind of exploring and we've discovered that there are, there are two kind of schools of 18 XX games. They're more operational ones, which are about mm. the geography of the game kind of figuring out the best routes to lay down to run your trains and investing in the right companies. And then there are these more financially angled ones, which are all about really clever buying and selling stock ploys um, to kind of sneak ahead, you know, buying up companies just to sell them off and then tank them. Or one thing you can do like in, like in 1830, one of the original ones is, buy enough shares of a company that it's, that it begins as a company gets additional assets buy a train into that company sell the train to one of your other companies and then just tank the original company and get rid of it um yeah. and there's stuff like that where you're just maneuvering money and trains and assets back and forth between your own companies it's 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 really clever and there's lots of Lots of interesting things that I I don't even know how to do yet with some of these more wild financial games, but I'm I'm very slowly kind of learning the basics. I mean, you sound like you're hooked here. I mean, this is a guy who is, you know, if you were maybe you know fifteen twenty years older, and if you said to me, you like, I've just I've got this basement, I'm going to be building myself my own model railway kind of thing, here we go, you know, I'm going to be wearing a hat and blowing a whistle and I'm going to be filling them with the electrics and I'm going to be getting some Hornby stock in here, then I'd be going, right, you know, there's that middle age, that's just hit. But, I mean, um, you're sounding genuinely excited by this. I mean, is yeah, it, and, is I it, and I don't even care about trains. Like, it's not a train thing to me. It's just a really, really interesting game system. Is it? Is it because other things are boring you? As in, are you seeing kind of like lots of games out there and going, nah, I've seen this. I've kind of played this. I've played, it's a different type of game, but I, I know I've played this before and this isn't this isn't kind of anything different. Is it because it's a completely different system for you that you're saying, well, I'm, it's like I'm a new gamer again. I'm going and I'm cutting my teeth. I have no idea what I'm doing. No idea of the strategies here. I'm learning everything and I know that I'm just at the tip of the iceberg and, oh, look, there's GMT. They're going to, you know, there's a whole pile of stuff I can get my teeth into. I mean, I think there's a little bit of that. I don't, I think, I think initially I got, the the games were appealing to me just because they were interesting systems. But now having played them Mm. and seen, kind of tried to do some of the deeper strategies and thought into it, I'll, I'll look back at, other games that I found pretty good, you know, mm. in a completely different genre, and then think, man, that really isn't, it's just the same thing as I've seen before. You know, so maybe mm. they've changed my perspective, but I don't think getting into 18xx was a, a result of a changed perspective. I don't know, I still like simple games, I still like light games, and they just have to do something interesting. The thing I'm seeing mostly with especially when i get like a review copy of a game from a first time designer or publisher is that they just neglect to put choices in the game and maybe that's maybe i'm more sensitive to that kind of thing because i've been playing more games like 18xx games that are very free form allow a lot of player agency mm. um but yeah just if if a game if i'm sitting there and i feel like i'm i've never made an interesting decision or a meaningful decision in 10 or 15 minutes. It's like, what am I even doing here? Like it just kind of 
happening instead of me doing something in the game. And in that, I mean, as I say, this sounds like you're kind of genuinely, you know, you're back on the you're back on the joy train, because I, I, I don't know, I've, I'm kind of going through a period at the moment where I'm kind of I'm being quite strict with me picking up new games, and I'm going mm-hmm. back and I'm playing all the all the ones that you know have come through various kind of maybe Kickstarter sources or ones that I have traded and stuff like that, traded in and, and kind of got, and I'm, I'm really trying to to not just kind of back stuff through Kickstarter or jump onto the new stuff because um, there seems to be a lot of hype about things and then it seems to die away. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I've... I've always tried to stay away from getting on the hype because I knew it was something I could never as a person who wants to be somewhat financially responsible, I couldn't do it. And then as, as a board game critic, I knew I can't, I can't keep up with all the releases. So my strategy in making the thoughtful gamer was never to be the first one to cover something. It was to be hopefully someone who covers things consistently in an interesting way, no Mm -hmm. matter how old they are. And, And you know, I'll review old games. I don't really care about the age of the game when I when I cover it but I've tried to stay away from that but even even still I think kind of the hype the marketing has gotten really good um to where you can get sucked into thinking that every game is going to be something new and interesting and innovative when in, in fact you know you get a couple of those a year that are that are generally or, or that are genuinely really really interesting and new and that can come from kickstarter i mean i think gloomhaven's a masterpiece uh but i don't necessarily think that we'll see something that advances on that for a few years perhaps um even though games are going to be trying to sell that um i think yeah, there'll I mean, be a lot there'll be a lot of games that'll be like good yeah yeah the, there'll be a lot of games that people are going to see as a gloomhaven copy or it takes this element of Gloomhaven and if then you're reading a critique of your game and it's mentioning continually going ahead and mentioning a game again and again you're like ah oh, does this I don't want you keeping mentioning the game that I'm yes I know it's similar to but I don't want you keeping mentioning Gloomhaven because then it looks like I'm just copying Gloomhaven and I don't want to to kind of get in into that, um, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of got this. I, as I say, I've been trying to go through kind of older games that have come from Kickstarter. So I put, I got Kami Sama to the table last week. I got Dinogenics to the table, um, and I played it around with it on the solo mode, but I'd never managed to get it to the table because, to be honest, the rule book, um isn't the best in the world. It's a bit jiggly, it's a bit kind of all over the place. There's a couple of bits of ambiguity in how certain things kind of work. Um, and so I was kind of kind of put off and putting it to the table. I got it to the table and I played it a couple of times. I really, really like it. It's really, really great. And I kind of, I'm kicking my ass, my own ass, though other people are free, free to kick my ass if they want to. Um, you know, um, there's a backer tier on Patreon. You can let me come up and kick my ass. Um, that's not true, um, but it might be a good idea. Um, but anyway, but I'm kind of in that thing of I was thinking. I was going, damn, I could have been playing this kind of like six months ago. Why am I, you know, why am I, why you know, is that kind of I need to now look back at my collection and make sure that I'm getting the kind of the full value. And what it's meant is it's encouraged me to take the foot off the gas in terms of picking up the kind of the, the games that everybody's kind of talking about. Um, and we also, we don't get kind of, we don't get kind of like review copies. We sometimes get like preview copies, but they're generally kind of prototype Kickstarter stuff. So it's not like the final version. It's not Mm -hmm. like, you know, um, so we don't get a lot of kind of like, brand new kind of shiny games as well so i mean it's something i'm looking at and we have got a writer on board who is now going to be doing a lot more writing and we're going to be seeing a lot more kind of a guess kind of review 
articles from us, but it kind of put me in the mindset is I need to start going back and enjoying what I've got and not collecting what I think I need. If you, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and, and and there seems to be also at least a little bit of publishers realizing that they can't kind of keep up with the churn of trying to get every new release out that, that they have. You know, get, mm-hmm. get dozens of releases a year and then hype hype them all up. I know. Uh, I think it's the president of AEG uh, put out a statement fairly recently where he's like, "We're just going to cut down on the number of games that we." release each year but we're going to try to support them better and i think Mm -hmm. publishers would be wise to well maybe not i mean from a business perspective maybe not all publishers would be wise to do that kind of thing but i certainly like to see that kind of thing where i you know maybe they're releasing six games a year one every two months but they're supporting them really well and they're making sure that they maintain visibility um because i mean it's just too many games to cover uh, it's too many games to keep up with, and once you get stuck in trying to keep up with it, it just becomes a collecting hobby rather than a game playing hobby. Yeah, no, and your coverage kind of suffers from it as well because you can't. I think it's really, really difficult for you to step back and say, "I'm not covering this," and going out and buying this in order to kind of or get a re or join the queue and try and get this game kind of sent to me. So that you can get something out pretty quickly, um, you know, I am going to be. I'm considering kind of writing something about kind of like Dinogenics. I want to do that. I want to write mm-hmm. something which is away from, I guess, the kind of the Kickstarter marketing hype of that time. I'd like to do something like I'd like to get. Um, what was I talking about? I was speaking with Mike Delicio from Sporadically Bored today about um, Wildlands. Mm -hmm. which is Osprey Games, and it's kind of like, it's kind of, somebody says, well, it's a a very, very kind of entry-level type of skirmish game. And this is the other thing, and maybe I want something to play where there's a little bit of bite to it, but it's relatively easy to kind of get in and pick up and play. And one of the things I loved about Dynagenics was that flow, and I talked about it quite recently on on another episode than that, but something like Wildlands, it's not new, it's been out for a little while. I'd like to do that, I'd like to maybe pick up a copy of Wingspan and look at it from the perspective of this is long after the event and, and how does it actually play and compare to stuff like that as well it's kind of it's kind of strange but there is all I don't know, because there are genuinely good games that deserve all the hype you know, because you did um, you covered um, you covered Tiny Towns mm-hmm. recently and for, <laughs> and I'll be honest for a while all I seen across a lot of the um a lot of the guys that were doing the like the podcasts and coverage and stuff like that, the you know, people a lot of people were talking about Tiny Towns and Tiny Towns to me looks like it it looks really, really fun. <laughs> it does look really, really fun. Yeah. Um but then again I'm like, is this a is this cause there's a lot of people all caught up on it? And because it's new and exciting and people are kind of getting bowled along and saying it's kind of really nice and exciting. But, I mean, how have you, how have you found Tiny Towns? Probably on the shelf, but, you know, um, what did you think I mean, of it? I, I think it's actually really good. I think it's one of the better, you know, what I would call family weight. So, like, you know, mm-hmm. kids can play it pretty easily, uh, although it's not necessarily directed at kids in any way. But that mm-hmm. kind of weight, you know, along the lines of Ticket to Ride or Carcassonne, uh, it's it's one of the best of the that style of game I've played. It's really, really, really fun. Um, and I think it's, think- I mean, it's a first time designer. Like I, I, I did an interview with him. Like he just kind of came across this concept, wrote it down, and then got it. You know, six months later was was had a publishing deal. It was actually kind of a really, a really interesting kind of just he had a good idea and then pursued it kind of thing to publish mm-hmm. his first game. Cause it looks, it's just kind of my, I don't know. It's kind of my, my bag with kind of, it looks like it's got really, really kind of relatively quite easy kind of mechanics to kind of pick up mm-hmm. and then you play it. And then 
you play it and you have fun and you can kind of bring anybody kind of in. And I'm kind of I'm kind of looking at that, those types of games as my my son gets older because my son he is um he's getting to that age where um beforehand it was like I was taking a game and I was stripping down the rules and saying okay you just move three spaces and then you do that and now I'm thinking you know something like tiny towns or um you know king of new york and small world and all those things are going to become kind of more accessible and tiny towns seems like it's potentially going to fall within that um within that kind of paddock but i mean in your experience yeah. does it is it kind of like that is this the kind of there's going to be it's going to be it's more complicated than what you would call a gateway game but it's complicated, you know, it's, but it's complicated enough to keep kind of people who have a small collection or a large collection is going to keep them kind of interested in it. I think so. Um, I mean, I think, and I, I'm typically a heavy gamer. Um, those are the games that I think are more interesting generally, although there are certainly a lot of light games that I enjoy. This one stands out to me as something really nice and really good. Because the concept is easy to understand, it's it's fun just to build things, and that's kind of that's kind of true of all Euro games. But in this one, it's it's easy to kind of express your strategic creativity and see it on in front of you on the board, and I think it allows a good amount of strategy in more in-depth strategic decision-making if you want to do that, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Mm -hmm. And then something else I pointed out in my review is that it taps into that like high score gaining instinct where in a lot of games, you know, if you ever had the experience where you're teaching a game and then like you've explained, you know, the, the goal is to get the most points and here's how you get points. Uh, or maybe you're being taught a game and you sit there and think, I have no clue what a good score is in this. Like, I have no clue what my <laughs> end point is going to look like or what a completed yeah. game looks like. In yeah. Tiny Towns, you know what it's going to look like. There's buildings all over your board, and each building is going to give you between, like, two and five points generally. Um, or if you, if you plan things out well. So, like, you can see the end point of the game from the very beginning, and then it's just a matter of trying to find the best way to pilot yourself into that into a good position there so i think it does yeah, it does a like lot when, of things in really yeah. nice subtle way yeah it's like when you're playing like terraforming mars or i think it's lords of water deep or any game where you know there's a whole track of numbers all the way around the board and you're just like um if this person's on 70 or you know am i going to ever kind of catch up with them and you know it, you're right. I mean, it's it's really really difficult to say. I I know I can score kind of thirty points here, but is that is that crap? <laughs> kind of thing. You have, yeah, yeah. You have no idea that somebody's going to come in behind you and go. Yeah, it's it's small enough where you you can kind of see it. You can kind of see the end point. Um, and I don't think it's I don't think it's a perfect game, but I think it's fun. I think it does. With the kind of laying, you know, geographical, spatial, laying down stuff and mm. pursuing different strategies, I think it does what King Domino was trying to do, but but in a more interesting way. Uh, where King Domino is trying to be a nice entry point game. Yeah. You know, you're drafting pieces, you're trying to lay them down wisely. Tiny Towns does that, and I think in a better way, because King Domino, you can really, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty about like what tiles are going to come up or what's going to be available later on in the game and tiny towns it's, it's all right in front of you and so for people who want to think about it more deeply um you know you get a, you get a bit of a random setup in what buildings are available it has that kind of dominion thing where if you if all the players are really into it you can sit there and kind of stare at the setup for a couple minutes and try <laughs> to each formulate a strategy mm. based on what the random setup gave you um so I've been really enjoying it. It's it's been great. Is it quite I mean, is it quite easy to kind of get a good sense of 
the game within a couple of plays because this is the other thing. Oh yeah, you know that I've seen a lot of people kind of like getting maybe a game two or three times to the table, and it's like they don't realize um, you don't realize the kind of the depths of the game unless you're getting into the game kind of seventh or eighth. It means it's fairly easy to kind of to start to kind of strategize, or you kind of have to play it kind of multiple times. I mean, it's there's like no intermediary steps really. It's mm. not like a game where you you do an action to set up a building, which will later on gather you use some resources in order to buy later buildings, and then eventually you get to the part where you're buying like victory point things. It's literally yeah. all the buildings just give you victory points in different ways, and some right. of them work together really well, or some of them require other buildings. So you can say, okay. If I build this, I get, you know, two victory points, or I get one victory point, but if I build a second one, it's worth three victory points, and so on. Um, or, oh, these are these are great, and they give me, like, three points each, but they need to be arranged in a very particular way to do that. Uh, so there's no, like, resource gathering <laughs> intermediary. It's just someone calls a resource, and everyone plays that resource. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're just trying to build buildings that will give you points. So it's really easy to pick up. I'm just, you know, I am just, I'm really, ah, uh, you're tempting me, sir, which is the worst <laughs> thing, you know, because I, mean, I, I, I want to, I want to find flaws in these things. I, I kind of look down and I want to find a reason kind of not to consider stuff. And nowadays there seems to be, there's a lot of brilliance coming out, but as I say, I want, I don't want reviews for things that have been, you know, here's the latest stuff. I want, you know, people, something that's maybe been sitting on a shelf for a couple of months and then somebody comes up and says, okay, this is what I think now that the kind of the hype has kind of died down a bit. But then at the same time, you still read over things like this and you're like going, I want, this is so colourful and pretty. <laughs> I just I know. mean I really really in my reviews try to try to take the perspective of is this game going to like last is it going mm. to hold my attention for a long time um and I think I mean for that kind of game it's about as good as you can get I mean in terms of it's similar to Carcassonne in that way right like Carcassonne's easy to teach and you can play it on this kind of basic level where, oh, this, you know, if I play here, it gives me two points, which is better than the other place, which gives me one point right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also get really into it and start memorizing the tiles and do complicated blocking maneuvers with the with the farms or whatever. Um, Tiny Towns has a bit of that where, you know, it's easy to figure out how to get some points, but if you really want to put some more thought into it, you can... You can do stuff like uh, trying to predict what other people are trying to build and block their resources in certain ways. Um, there's more interaction there. The The main criticism I have for it, like, I don't think it's a perfect game. The main thing is that there's an issue where because the game is such that you go around in, in a circle calling a resource. So someone's like, okay, we're building brick. And everyone has to place a brick cube mm. on their board. A problem that arises is that everyone will start copying each other because you'll see, oh, these two resources only go to this one building. Clearly, the first two people had the same idea. They're trying to build this building. Mm -hmm. And if you don't follow along with that, you're often at a disadvantage because you, you lose tempo trying to go away from what other people have called. Um, so in some games, there's this weird situation where everyone has built like the exact same th first three buildings and no one wants to break away from this. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it saves that from being a big issue because everyone has the, a secret building, a monument that they can, they only have access to, which are yeah, often very, yeah. very lucrative. Um, but you can get into weird situations where you don't want to break away from like the game zeitgeist because you're just going to lose points on it, but it, it gets really dull if everyone's doing the exact same thing. 
Uh, you're not doing anything main, at all to persuade me not to kind of, you know, but this is you're just making this worse now, Mark. I think we need to, to move <laughs> away. I do so yeah, I mean I guess what we're saying is if you're in any doubt about what you should do with tiny towns that you should potentially you should go and read this review. Were you hungry when you wrote this review by any chance? Was I hungry? Yeah, because it's just like you're mentioning kind of like you know, plates of nachos and, and crunches and oh yeah, you yeah. know stuff like that. Was it you know were you kind of secretly you I know might have been. going? I need I to kind of get was... this out of the way and then I can go and get myself a snack. You know, I I don't remember, when you're... but I always <laughs> I mean... try to include something in my reviews that an editor would remove, <laughs> and I was very proud of that that analogy. I I kind of. Because I edit my own stuff and it's my own fault, I should actually get somebody to edit my stuff because my I write how I talk, which is like oh, I do exactly you know, the same it's thing. Like, it's like my keyboard ends up being covered in phlegm by the time I've kind of like written, and sometimes I'll read stuff back and I'll just go, "What were you, what were you even thinking about? This is just an actual. This is just <laughs> why you try to be clever here, um, you know, kind of thing." Um, yeah. Do well, you aim to? Of- do you game to get a line in to review? You know, do you come up... Are you like me that you come up with a really clever line and then realise you're going to have to write like another 500 words around that line in order to make it work? Um, or is that just me being uh, an I idiot? Quite, I haven't quite had that issue yet. I don't know. I always try to... I, yeah. My only experience writing when I've actually had an editor has been fairly negative so i always in, i always try to include something that's just stupid <laughs> like i'll invent a word or <laughs> that analogies like that or a stupid um uh, alliteration i'll throw in like a string of alliterations in there for no reason mm-hmm. just to mm-hmm. i don't want to be dull <laughs> it's it's just again it's just the whole hunger thing Tiny Towns is fun because it taps into that snack size. Personal opinion, I'm really hungry. I'd like a biscuit or a cookie, please. <laughs> so it just kind of made me think that potentially, um, you know, it, it you were maybe... Have, I might have been really hungry. I don't I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. And now I'm off to the fridge. Review co- <laughs> it is review copy provided by Pizza Hut. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I wish I got sent uh, pizzas to review. I'm in the wrong gig here. Could you actually get a job? Could, I mean, could you imagine that? But then you would get sick of pizzas, though. You know, I don't know. And then what would happen if you get? You'd end up with a one that's like you'd end up with some weird one, which is like you know, and you know the cheese on this one is made out of dog milk. <laughs> um, oh gosh, no! <laughs> and and that's just kind of. That's just kind of bringing it, bringing it kind of back, um, kind of full circle. Are you gonna be? Are you gonna start doing more eighteen xx games? And is this? Are you gonna turn into kind of like the GMT kind of fan club? Then is this is what is this where you're going with things? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna. I plan to review eighteen forty six because that's the one I've played the most. Mm. But once in that, and that'll kind of, I think. I think that will kind of work as a review of 18xx as a system. Mm. Uh, for other 18xx games, I don't know what I'll do. I'll maybe, maybe I'll do something semi regular where I kind of do mini reviews of different 18xx's I've played. But there, there's so many similarities between them that I don't know how if I could do a full feature on each different one. That'd be difficult. I'm going to stop you there, Mark, and say you sit on a throne, a throne of lies, and there's definitely going to be, you're definitely going to cover an awful lot more. I'll, I tell you what, I'll eat, I'll eat this hat that you cannot see on camera, but there's definitely a hat here. If you just write one eighteen xx kind of playthrough and review, I can see you going back and doing eighteen xx a retrospective. Let's start from the beginning and play them all forward. Because all happen is like oh, GMT, GMT will hear you, and their little ears will prick up, and the next thing you know, you'll get a nice email saying, "Go and send us your mailing address," and then you'll say, "But I've got a basement." And it's like, okay, we can fill it. 
then you'll be up to your eyes. <laughs> there's there's the dream. I did I did pre order their their next one because I was playing. I, I actually got to I play. Well, I got to play it because they're just they're reprinting ones that have already been made so far. At least they, they haven't done any original ones. So I got so to play. Long. So lying to, play, to yourself right now. I got to play 1862. We actually played it back to back. We played it twice in a row because it was so weird and interesting. And then uh, in the middle of the second play, I'm like, well, I, I'm just going to pre-order it. It's no use. I, I can't resist this one. Eight, 1862 is really weird. Like, it, it gets crazy. There are three different types of trains, and the map's super claustrophobic. And Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll do a review of, of 46 and 62, and then from then on, I'll do the reviews. And then they'll be able to say, reviews. I can stop any time I want. This will yeah, be, precisely. You'll be having this conversation in another year, you know, and you're going to come on, you're going to be on camera and all it's going to be is like, you're going to be wearing a GMT t-shirt, you know, it's going to have you a little have slogan hats. on it. <laughs> you can have one of those hats. And then you're going to be, oh, I've just got to turn this this music off, just give me a second and it'll be Casey Jones right into the camera. Oh. <laughs> That'll be you, we lost you. You'll have to go into some kind of 18xx well, recovery. You'll have, you know. Remember be, how it was. <laughs> this is it. This is it. You know. So if people, <laughs> if people want to remember you for what you are just now, before you obviously tumble down into this, uh, the, the kind of your devastating life to be um, around train stock, where can we, where can we find you on the internet webs? Uh, so everything I do is put on the thoughtful mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, on social media, I'm on Twitter and Facebook, uh, probably more time on Twitter than Facebook, but if you just look up the thoughtful gamer, you'll find me. And what I'll do is I'll make sure, I mean, as normal, we'll put these, but the other thing to do is, um, um, I'm just going to say that, um, Mark's work is very, very good and um, you should, you can support him, obviously support him by reading his work, make sure you listen to the, the podcast that he does. Um, you can also support him on Patreon as well. He's not going to tell you to support him on Patreon, but I'm going to tell you is if, you're, <laughs> if, 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 there's, if there's a choice between buying like a quart of oat milk and sticking some money towards Mark's Patreon... I know where I'm putting my money. Um, yeah, you know. I mean, so, um, I'm just saying. I'm not. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I am not one to. I, I feel weird self promoting, but I, I can probably guarantee that my stuff is better than oat milk. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oat milk, oat milk on cereal is pretty good. Um, but even you know, just, uh, and if you if like, you can't be like, bothered, that's like it's like chicken and, and eggs. You're just putting more oats on oats. It's like, it's like self-cannibalizing food. It's just, well, it's better than having cow milk anyway. Or the other thing is, if you want to actually be involved in a bit of kind of a milky goodness, you can also buy Marka coffee as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Good coffee. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. See, Look. clever. Linking all the time. This is better food. than, this is a better self-promotion thing than I've ever done on my own podcast. Well, it's certainly it couldn't be it couldn't be any worse than the opening that we did. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, if we you did set keep, the bar low. Well, I mean, I think we're only destined ourselves to fail. You know, we, we, it's like giving a por a porcupine child a set of balloons to play with. I mean, sure. it was only going to end up one way. Um, if, if you want to keep an eye on what we're up to, and if you've listened until the end of this, um. Bless you, uh, you lovely, lovely person. I applaud you. We, we both applaud you, and we will we will send we will send you non milk milk to an address of your choice. Um, you can find us on the various places, worn out faces, worn out places. Um, on Twitter, at we're not wizards. <laughs> Facebook, at we're not wizards. I have no idea why I brought that in. I must have been listening to that or watching Donnie Darko. Do you know what it was? Yeah, yeah. I was watch. I was watching Jake Gyllenhaal on do the Spider-Man thing, and then it reminded me of Donnie Darko, which reminded me of 
the soundtrack to that film, which is glorious mm-hmm. in its oh, way. In that, that's a really shape. good movie. It's that a was really like good movie. it was it was really hyped back when it came out, and then I think everyone kind of forgot about it. But I, I saw it after the fact, and it's it's really good. I remember walking into shops and just seeing rows and rows and rows of Donnie Darko on DVD because you couldn't get it for love nor money. And then everybody bought tons of stock in and then had to sell it at a discounted price because they had the worst stuff. Um, but you can, <laughs> you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and you've got our website and we've got our email address. And if you want to email us about anything magical, you can email us at magic at wearenotwizards.com. And if you want to email us about the podcast, you can email us about podcast at wearenotwizards.com. If you like what you've listened to, consider going to the various podcast catchers out there that either use the word pod or the word cast in them except spotify which uses neither because it likes to be difficult um Stitcher. or you can <laughs> don't i mean itunes speaker. technically doesn't, doesn't well, it's not called that. itunes is it it's called apple podcast smart alec oh is it <laughs> i don't use any apple stuff <laughs> I'm just sorry. try to lead into the Apple I'm stuff. You just block it off. Try to do the entry so you can go <laughs> home. So you can get back to your basement. F- phoning up people that won't come round. You know, playing your train games. Um, but if you do like us, there's a couple of things you can do. Obviously, Mark's not going to like us. He's not going to come back again. Um, but you can go to um, Apple Pot. You can tell people about us. Because, <laughs> you know, we need to be... We're like kind of like chicken pox <laughs> kind of thing. And we're hoping there's anti-vaxxers out there. Um, but that doesn't work because, you know. Cause <laughs> <laughs> uh, or you could go to Apple Podcasts and you can drop us a subscription or a rating or a review. If you, um, Probably better not giving us a rating or a review this week because that wouldn't be a good thing. I think it's going to turn out quite bad for us. Um, <laughs> Find a different um, episode. The other thing you can do is... Um, yeah, so do that. I don't know. Tell somebody. I have no idea. Help, help, help. There's a fire. Um, but um, there's only two more things to do. The first thing is to remember that we're many things, but we're not wizards. Are, <laughs> are we wizards, Mark? I mean, you couldn't even you couldn't even say it without laughing. I know, I know. But it's not about me. It's about you. So you're a wizard. Am I? I'm not a wizard. Yeah, of course you're not train driver and um, the other thing is, is to say goodbye so it's a goodbye from um, the rather wonderful, the rather fantastic the rather wondering why he came on and expected to speak board games which he talked for board games for five minutes so he should be happy but it'll probably take him about another year to get over this experience but hopefully he'll forget about it as uh, the rather wonderful Mark Davis. Goodbye uh, see you in a year <laughs> <laughs> And it's it's a goodbye for me. Remember, uh, stay safe. Rule six is make something awful. Dot fireside. Dot fm. And until the next time, um, toot toot. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that'll do. That was a train wreck. <laughs> oh, I love it. Wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to.